Hi, I'm Mary O'Neill. I'm the Vice President of Security for Nokia, based in Ottawa, Canada. What makes Canada attractive for FDI? What are our competitive advantages? And perhaps you could hint at what you think we could already improve. I, I'm sure almost everyone will have the same answer. It, it's our highly skilled workforce. Um, so we have very highly skilled technology workers. We have an ecosystem in Canada where we've had years and years and years, decades of, of high tech uh, investment and knowledge. And we have the universities that support that. And, um, you know, it's a very innovative, innovative workforce. And I think that's our real competitive advantage is our people. In terms of improving, I, I, I thought about how Canada could improve this. And I've had the good fortune of being a CEO of a startup company and, and living through a startup company and having it acquired. And I've been an executive in large companies. And one of the observations I have is it seems easier to get funding and support if you're a large company versus a small startup company. And maybe it's just because the big companies have the people who know how to access all the information. Um, and I think there's a lot of support out there for small companies. Uh, but sometimes as a small company, you don't always know how to access it and leverage it. So that, that would be the one improvement area. Is there anything actually that distinguishes Ottawa from, from Canada as an investment destination? There's a couple of things about Ottawa that are, that are great. Um, I, I just look at the long history of tech investment here, whether it was Bell Northern Research, you know, Nortel, Newbridge, and, and what that's led off to in terms of spinoffs and innovation and startup companies. And, you know, you mentioned my former company, Nikina Systems, was purchased, you know, by Nokia. And uh, I've been with Nokia almost five years now. And, you know, the Ottawa has just such a, a wealth of experience uh, across multiple domains. You know, I, I think initially it may have been more in, in the connectivity domains and network equipment vendors, but that's, you know, through the years that's really spread out and you've got, you know, everything from Shopify to all kinds of security companies, cybersecurity companies. So there's one of the real differentiated, one of the things I love about Ottawa is the ecosystem we have in Ottawa for high tech. And, you know, we have Invest Ottawa, we have Elspark, which is an innovation hub. And all of those organizations really help people to network, whether you're in a small company or a big company. It's a it's a great environment, and there are lots of networking opportunities for people and um, to experience new technology and to learn from each other. If we if we look at the sports systems we have in Ottawa, we have a, a great environment in which to live and to work, and partially that's because of the federal government um, being here. So definitely, the other I mean the other big advantage of Ottawa is you have the government, especially in cybersecurity, you have government as well as small startup companies as well as big companies. I'm the VP of security at, at Nokia and we provide security for critical infrastructure. And so you've got all different uh, types of security expertise and uh, value being generated in the region. And the federal government is certainly a big part of that. Now, you said uh, it's all connected, which, of course, you could take figuratively or literally in, in terms of the, the tech sector. Um, and, and, it's, and it's the underpinning of, frankly, everything in our, in our world today and going forward. Um, having said that, when we interviewed Mike Tremblay, the president of uh, Invest Ottawa, he also said that one of Ottawa's strengths or one of his agency's strengths is that they're not trying to be everything to everyone and that Ottawa has clearly made choices. With that in mind, what do you see in the future for Ottawa? Would it be, will it be more of the same? Will it be more specialization? Personally, and maybe this is just my background, is I, I would personally bet on security and um, IoT. And I think there are lots of companies in Canada, startup companies that can invest in, in IoT applications. I think 
then there are lots of companies that can supply the secure connectivity for that. But without having security under, you know, underpinning that, you absolutely need it. And I think, I think Ottawa in particular has, and Canada in general, has great security capabilities. And we, um, we are a trusted country, you know, in terms of, of security. And uh, another big differentiator we have, which I'm not sure that people are aware of, but Nokia itself, we, we do our, all of our mobile threat intelligence is done out of a lab in Canada. And so, you know, we really specialize in, in mobile threat intelligence for critical infrastructure. And, and I know when I talk to some of the major uh, service providers in Canada, you know, threat intelligence and being proactive and understanding what's happening out there from a security perspective is absolutely critical. And that's a priority. And the Canadian government also plays an important role in that. So I think we have tremendous assets, both in people and in terms of knowledge, to really make a difference in, in security. And I mean, turn on the news almost every day you hear something in security. It's a growth growth area, right? So, um, and it's also a very fragmented market. So you can again, you can pick which which areas you want to to focus in, and you can't have autonomous vehicles without security. You talked earlier about uh, our innovation ecosystem, uh, you know, the, the hubs or clusters that are there, um, the, the federal support, you know, uh, agencies for entrepreneurs, for instance, that are there. So, so, so all of that at the end of the day is about talent. I believe talent precedes innovation. Uh, and so um, it, it, you mentioned COVID too. And so we are obviously in, in this really strange period where it might be a bit more complicated to attract talent to Canada. What, what, what do you think about that in your space? And as a large employer that obviously must constantly be monitoring its talent pipeline, um, what, what do you think um, basically can be done to adapt to this reality going forward? In terms of attracting talent, it's been really interesting during COVID. I mean, you miss the personal interaction, but you know, it's a high tech company, you make it work. And to some degree, we probably are hiring people all over, you know, during COVID. And I personally haven't found an issue attracting talent in, in, in Ottawa. And I think partially that's because we offer really interesting work. I think when we do really interesting things, if anything, we have people from other countries wanting to come to Canada to work in Canada from other parts of the world. And I think hiring students is, is just such a great opportunity. And and there are government programs that, you know, we haven't talked about. So there's this MyTech program, which will actually subsidize if you hire a master's student or a PhD student, right? And then we have universities. Um, I'll put in a, a plug for the University of Victoria out in British Columbia, but we've hired master's students from there uh, into our threat intelligence lab and they just hit the ground running. It's just, just absolutely amazing. So. And so there's programs out there where the government is encouraging people uh, and helping companies hire students. And that's absolutely great. And when you get those great students in and, you know, you give them something interesting to do and work, then, um, you know, that's a great way of tracking talent. I just finished a six month program with Elspark where they had women entrepreneurs mentoring uh, women entrepreneurs. So, you know, a woman entrepreneur can make her pitch. Um, if she got selected, then they would be signed uh, a female mentor for, for her where you would mentor uh, on a regular basis that entrepreneur. And so that's an example of something that Elspark does, which encourages women to create business and diversity. And finally, I'd like to finish on somewhat of a almost philosophical note. Um, th th there's often misunderstandings around the value of FDI in a country and perhaps also a bit of perceived risks, specifically 
you know, in some cases from um, from from certain countries that we hear a lot about, um, probably not Finland. Uh, <laughs> what what is the value of FDI to uh, Canada's economy and 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 Ottawa's um, let's say economic development? Well, I look at Nokia. Nokia is a Finnish company that invests in Ottawa, and as I mentioned before, we have over two thousand people working in Ottawa for Nokia, and so that's a lot of. A lot of jobs and families that are being supported, and and, um, and you know high paying jobs, right? So, uh, so that's that's really positive. I think it also gives us access to world markets. So, uh, when I had a small company, Nokia, we were partnering with Nokia, and Nokia took our products worldwide, which as a small startup in Canada, I never would have had access to those markets. Um, and, uh, you know, so it's created and, and and by generating that money from sales worldwide, we were able to have a startup company in Ottawa that supported, you know, 100 families. And then, you know, then we become part of Nokia and Nokia you know, takes that and invests more heavily in it and you create more jobs and you create more cyber expertise uh, in our country. So uh, from my perspective, it's been very positive. Mm -hmm.